Hello everyone, my name is Alan and welcome to the first episode of Teardown TV. We're the same people that brought you the teardowns on the Nintendo Wii, the Atari 2600, and the Apple iPhone. First off, a little background on who we are and what we do. Here at Semiconductor Insights, we're technical analysts and part of what we do is take things apart to find out how, how they work and what makes them tick. Kind of like Siler on Heroes, we study the insides and consequently that's how we learn how they work. Why we do this is because it gives us an idea of what technology the industry is using. It tells us what semiconductor manufacturers are getting design wins, which in turn helps us determine potential intellectual property or IP targets. So why is IP important? Well, when it comes to consumer electronics, it's really all about the money. Sometimes a manufacturer will create a chip that is very similar to their competitions, i.e. copied. And if that chip ends up in a phone or TV that sells millions of units, well, the competition can look to legal compensation for all the revenue they potentially lost. Take for example what's happening between Qualcomm and Nokia, where Nokia has banned pretty much any product with a Qualcomm chip inside from being shipped in the U.S. because of IP infringement. That, in a nutshell, is why we take things apart. Well, I just like to break things. And this would be Sam, he's our teardown specialist. Today, Sam's gonna be taking apart the Sony Bravia LCD television. It's a 46 inch and it's state of the art. So without further ado, I'm gonna let Sam get down to tearing this thing apart. Sam, we gotta do this quickly because if Richard and Sales find out his TV is missing, we're shrewd. What, we're on a low budget here. Hey guys, I just ran into Richard in the hallway. He seems a little angry. Do you guys know what happened to his TV? Alan, what is Sam tearing apart? What? Nothing. It's a TV. It could be anyone's TV. Jeez, Alan, I leave you alone for ten minutes. Well, since I haven't seen the insides of a TV since I took my parents apart in high school, why don't we see what Sam has opened up for us? Wait, why did you take your parents' TV apart? It's a long story involving a prank gone horribly, horribly wrong. Why don't we talk about how an LCD TV actually works first? LCD TVs work by charging a pixel on the screen to change the amount of light that passes through a red, green, or blue color filter. Oddly enough, LCD technology has been around for over a hundred years, even though the first LCD TVs recently hit the market. It was first discovered in 1888 by Frederick Reinitzer. He's an Austrian and commercialized by RCA in 1968. LCD technology is based on the properties of polarized light. Two thin, polarized panels surround a thin liquid crystal gel that is then divided into individual pixels. These two planes of transparent material have, on one side, a liquid crystal display polymer coating. Pneumatic liquid crystals, naturally twisted in form, are added between the two planes. When an electrical current is applied, the crystal untwists, preventing light from passing through. When a certain color is required, a different electrical current will allow light to pass through the color filter in varying degrees. Each of the three pixels, one for red, green, and blue, permit different degrees of light to pass through to create a shade, resulting in the desired color. All of the pixels operating at the same time create the image as we see on the screen. This particular Bravia TV, the KDL46V2500, was the first from Sony to feature full HD 1920x1080p native resolution LCD panels. At its release, it was double the pixels found in most HD TVs, and more than five times out of enhanced definition televisions. It also features backlight technology to help remove ghosting problems from the screen. Ghosting refers to a situation where blurred or double images appear on screen due to fast moving action. The earlier LCD TVs had a problem with this, which is part of the reason why plasma TVs had an edge in popularity. Please note that this TV had hundreds of components, but we decided to focus on the ones we felt were interesting. That and our video editor Adam said if we picked more than five chips to look at, we'd have to find another video editor. First, let's take a look at this component. It's an ATI Zillion, Zex, Zillion, Salophone, ugh, whatever. Zillion. That's what I said, Zillion. It's the Zillion 240HL chip. It's used for digital signal reception and image processing for DTV solutions. It has a digital front end for demodulating and decoding, and a MIPS CPU. This one also has an advanced deinterlacing technology that reduces artifacts in high def to give a nice picture. Wait, artifacts? 
Of course, you'll need an HDMI receiver to get the full benefit of the ATI part. And there it is. Looks like a silicon image Vastlane part. It's a dual input version 1.2 receiver that can support up to 1080p resolution. A definite must when you're watching high def episodes of Heroes, Lost, or Gilmore Girls. Wait, did you just say Gilmore Girls? Uh, no. You did. Anyway, you'll need graphic RAM to make the display work too, which is supplied by Samsung. There are two 128 megabit GDDR devices. Like many Sony products like the PS3 and the PSP and the Clio, you'd expect to see quite a few Sony labeled components, wouldn't you? In this case, there's two Sony labeled components. Only two of them. Huh. Well, the CXD9887 should be the image processor that drives the picture onto the screen. These things cost around 130 bucks, according to Sony's website. And the CXA2069 is probably for the Dolby Digital Sound playback. And what about memory on a TV marvel like this? On this particular Sony brand, we see two Commanda 256 megabit DDR SD RAM parts on the board. Guess for an LCD TV, it's not really necessary to have the most state-of-the-art DRAM to make it work. It's also apparent that you don't really need a lot of memory storage either. SD Microelectronics has their 120 megabit NAND flash memory in this model for storing user-defined settings. Lastly, there's 16 megabits of memory from Reconyx to boot up storage that would run the Fujitsu 32-bit microcontroller. So there you have it. That's what a $2,700 TV looks like once it's been attacked by a screwdriver. Sam, thanks for tearing apart the Sony TV for us today. It's my pleasure. And thank you for joining us. If you have any questions or suggestions of what you'd like to see torn down, please email us at teardowntv at semiconductor.com. Until then, we'll see you next time. Sam, run.